Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about a fascinating new study that was just released last month in Nature Immunology. It uh, came out of three researchers in Australia, and what they discovered was a brand new immune cell, which is fascinating in and of itself, but where the cell resides is in the small intestine, in the lining of the small intestine, which makes sense because 80% of our immune system is located in our small intestine. So this immune cell is pretty fascinating because it does a lot of amazing things. It protects us from invading bacteria, it protects our good bacteria, it can actually heal cancerous lesions and other lesions in the small intestine, which makes me think it's uh, helpful in healing leaky gut. It's also anti-inflammatory, which is very, very key because inflammation in the gut can then cause things like autoimmune disease. Um, inflammation in the body in general, we know, is an initiator of pretty much every degenerative disease we're trying to avoid. So anything that's naturally anti-inflammatory is extremely helpful. Uh, this helps in obesity and a few more things. Let me check my notes for a second. Um, actually, no, that was it. I got it. All right. But the key point was this. So these cells get activated by a gene. So a gene turns on and then activates these cells. But then the question was, how do you get the gene to turn on? So what the researchers found was that food turns on the gene. Of course, not any food, but our favorite food, at least my favorite food, uh, but not just green leafy vegetables, which I talk about a lot, but cruciferous green leafy vegetables. So these specific types of food actually turn on this gene that then turns on these cells to do all this wonderful stuff for us. So uh, what are green cruciferous vegetables? Things like arugula and bok choy and collard greens, uh, daikon, cauliflower, um, broccoli, um, broccoli raw, broccoli flowers, anything broccoli. Um, kale, watercress, uh, I think I mentioned collard greens, now I'm going to check my list, um, radish, turnip greens, so that's most of them, there's a few more, and if you check my website um, on uh, my blog on my website, which is healthnowmedical.com, if you go to my blog you can see the entire list of, of these green cruciferous vegetables. Uh, but the point is that we are supposed to get seven to nine servings of uh, fruits and vegetables a day. I like to say at least nine. That means at least five servings of vegetables. So if we can really push these uh, green cruciferous vegetables, we can turn on this gene, turn on these cells, and get a lot of benefit from it. So um, these are, the green cruciferous are a little bit more tart, a little bit, um, you know, they're not certainly the, the sweeter vegetables like the carrots and the peas, so you might have to, um, you know, get used to their taste a little bit. They're a little bit more bitter uh, on the whole, but well worth it, definitely well worth putting in your diet. So I thought you'd be interested in this study. Please pass it along. Vegetables are your friend. They do wonderful things for us. and. Uh, this research was really, really fascinating as far as exactly how much they can do for us. So I hope that was helpful for you. Please pass this along uh, to others. Enjoy your green vegetables. And until next time, I wish you very good health.